you know, that's kind of what my why is. My why is, is like, I, I don't, I don't like running. So I figure if I'm going to go run a hundred miles, can I run a hundred miles? I don't know. We all think we can do something. I see a lot of guys out here walking around thinking they could still go get in a gunfight, but hell, there's 70 pounds overweight. They ain't fucking ran since they got out of the military. And you know, they still think they got it, right? You still see guys sitting in their, their chairs looking like, you know, the Pillsbury Doughboy talking shit about that quarterback playing football because they played in high school, right, on, on Sunday. You just kind of waltzed over running a 100 mile race. I can't wrap my mind around it, man. What does that mean? Like, okay, so I read David Goggins, that's his name, right? Yeah. I read his book and there's a whole chapter devoted to his first 100 mile race yeah. and how he basically got like rhabdo from it and, you know, according to his book was like pissing blood and like yeah. all kinds of crazy shit. He didn't train for it. Yeah. And um, it's a nightmare sequence like in the book and... As a man, like, I don't know, I want to run a marathon one day, like, and I will, but a hundred miles, like basically four marathons. Okay. So knives, I got one for you. Talk to me. You run the Marine Corps marathon with me next year. I'm in. Say it again. I am, I am fucking in. Okay. I don't even know when it is. Okay. Well, it's November, it's October or November of next year. So you've got, you got a year. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've, I've dropped like 40 pounds. So what are you going to do? This year. So are by you, then, I, sh I should be even better. Are you going to do it? I'm doing it. All right, done. Y'all heard it. You guys heard it here first. Knives is going to run the Marine Corps Marathon with me. That is rad. I mean, the fact that I'm with you, I mean, there. that that makes it, that's a big why right there. Okay. So that's my question for you, for the 100. You know, what's your what's your why? Um, You know, like I have this theory, again put this in the book of Dakota Myers theories and we should give the book away because it's worth what people pay for it. Um, so I think as men, even as people, but especially as men, I'm going to talk about men. I, don't, I can't talk about women. I've never been one. I've never, n never even thought that I was one. Um, but I, uh, I think as men, we are designed DNA to do shit to make people proud. Like we want people to be proud of us, but but we don't want to be given given it. We want to earn it, right? And I mean, look at animals in look at animals. Animals always show off to other people, right? Like they want to be the king of the jungle, right? Like you know, like they're it's it's just in our DNA, especially as men, to to want to do stuff to make people proud. And so I think that like when you get to the point in life to where you're not challenging yourself and you're not going out and you're not doing hard shit and you're not, you're not doing stuff that you could lose at and that the stakes are high. And I'm not saying you got to go, you know, go gunfight, but I'm saying like that you could lose, that you could fail at, right? That there's a, a, a legitimate chance that, that, that it's going to take a lot of work for you to succeed because that's what earning it is. And so for me, I think that when you stop doing things that are hard, when you stop doing things that challenge you, you really, you start to lose yourself because you don't feel like you're giving people something to be proud of. And so, you know, it, it's like this combination of things of proving to yourself that you still got it, you're in the game. I mean, you look in some, you look in some animal kingdoms, right? Whatever you call them. Um, but when the male stops being the male, he literally goes off from the herd to die. And so many men have, well, you know, back in my day, or they're sitting on the couch at, at 35, 40 years old. You know, they've, they've set, as Tim Kennedy says, they set their sword down and you know, I did that for a long time. I mean, I got out of the military and it was like, well, you know, people were telling me, oh, you've, you've done enough for this country. That's the most dangerous thing that you can look at a man and say is that, hey, you've done enough. You know, you've, you've done enough, man. You, you ever thought about just, just taking it easy? We're not, it ain't, like it is genetically playing against us to take it easy, right? So for me, and that's where you see these men start to create their own challenges, they start doing that with their families, their wives, their kids, 
They start going out and chasing women um, because they need that challenge, right? And so for me, putting these challenges in front of me to, to, to have to hit, um, it gives me that sense of holding my sword, right? Still getting after it, still pushing myself to the limit, still seeing what Dakota Meyer has in it. I'm not against anybody. I'm not here to beat anybody. I'm here to, I'm here to beat me, right? And so um, to make myself better. And when I'm better, my kids are better. My, you know, Lauren's better. My, my fiance's better. You know, you're better. Everybody that's around me is better. When Dakota Meyer's good, everybody else is good around me, right? And so, you know, that's kind of what my why is. My why is, is like, I, I don't, I don't like running, so I figure if I'm going to go run 100 miles, can I run 100 miles? I don't know. We all think we can do something. I see a lot of guys out here walking around thinking they could still go get in a gunfight. But hell, they're 70 pounds overweight. They ain't fucking ran since they got out of the military. And, you know, they still think they got it, right? You still see guys sitting in their, their chairs looking like, you know, the Pillsbury Doughboy talking shit about that quarterback playing football because they played in high school, right, on, on Sunday, and it's like, yeah, we're all legends in our own mind, but are we still, can we, do we still got it? Can we still get up? Can I still go? Can, can I run a hundred miles? Can I do it fast? Can I even make it right? You know, in theory, in my mind, if I asked you knives, Hey knives, do you, do you think I can go run a hundred miles? I actually think that you can. Yeah, he, exactly. <laughs> but because I know that, but can I? But you know what I mean? You still got to do it. You still got to do it. You still got to do but it. But I know like it's, I know your why is there and I know that uh, out of anybody I've ever met, your brain, when it goes to a dark place, just gets it done. A hundred percent. Well, you, well it, it has up to this point. Yes, sir. But will it, will it going a hundred miles? I don't know. In theory, <laughs> we think that, right? We think that. We think that. But like you can either talk about what you could do. Or you can live off of what you did do, you know? And so I'm going to run. So this is my goal. My goal is, and y'all can't see it, but I've got a whole huge whiteboard over here. So 2024 goals. Well, so let's end this this year. So I am going to launch. Uh, I have a hydration product coming out. I'm going to launch my book. I'm going to run my 100-mile race in December. And then 2024, I'm going to run an Ironman and qualify for Kona. I'm going to climb Mount Rainier. I'm going to run the Marine Corps Marathon. I'm going to um, so qualify for Kona. I want to do a smoke divers course, and I want to run the Mid-State Mile next year. That's what I got so far. Wow, 2024 is just like a year for adventures for you. Well, it's just a it's a foundational year, and then we're going to do even more 2025. Even more? <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, like, we're going to climb, I'm going to climb Mount Denali. At some point, I want to climb Mount Everest. Huh. Right? You know, that's what it's about, nice. About getting after it.